Welcome back to my channel! I'm Melanie, I'm very happy you're here and today we're going to talk about all the books I've read in December. So first of all some stats, I read 11 books, uh, 3,700 pages and I rated uh, three, four books, three stars, <laughs> three books, four stars, and five books, four stars, which was a good, very good reading month for me. Regarding format, I read four books physically, five books on audiobook, and two books on ebooks. And uh, for age demographic, I read seven adults and four young adults. And for genre, I read two biography, we'll see. I don't know how to categorize them. Um, one classic, one contemporary, one, two high fantasy, three graphic novels, one poetry and one romance. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> so first of all, I'm gonna talk to you about a book that I started reading in December, but I still haven't finished. It's The Complete Robot by Azak Asimov. It's a short story collection all about uh, robots and the three laws of robotic that Asimov invented. It's very interesting. Some of them are super short, like five pages, and some of them are like 50, 75 pages. And it's character that um, he invented and reused several times. So it's like continu a continuity. And um, I'm having a, a bit of a hard time to just find the time to pour myself into it. Like when the stories were super short, it was fine. I was just reading it at night, but now that they are longer, it tends to take more time for me to read them, but I'm still invested. I'm still interested. So I've read <laughs> this far in December. I keep the bookmark so you can see, and I've read this far in January so far. I'm hoping to finish it by the end of January so I can talk about it, but um, yeah, still, so going through this. And then for the books I've finished, completed <laughs> before the end of December, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with the, um, the one that I like the least and then end up on the one I like the most. So I'm gonna start with a graphic novel, which is The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wong. Um, I found it on Scrib and so I've read it there on ebook. And it was a cute story. I really liked the artwork in it, um, but I didn't really connect it to the characters. Uh, to tell you about the story, it's uh, I think it's in France. It's set up in France um, around eight, seventeen hundred something like this, and it's about a prince who likes to dress up as a woman and he undertakes a seamstress to uh, make him garments and all the ladies of the of the cour looks up at, at her his personal uh, when she's dressed up with his beautiful dress because they're kind of avant-garde and yeah uh, very cute story i like the message behind it but i didn't really connect and <laughs> it's stupid to say but it's so unrealistic um, that for me, like everybody was like, oh, that's a guy dressing up as a woman. Oh, well, spoiler, it's by the end. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a nice, cute story, but it wasn't for me. Um, another graphic novel that I've read is uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender, North and South. Um, I love Avatar, the Last, the Last Airbender. I love the show. I love the message behind the show. I love every character in it. And so, I started reading the graphic novels a few years ago and every time I feel nostalgia I read one of them and this one I think it's the last one that it's out completely fully out and it's nice I like it but the, um, the characters are divided in two groups so you're not following the whole cast together and I don't know some character decisions didn't for me didn't go with who they are as character, like they didn't act like, like like I expected. So it was a bit weird, but I was glad to be back in that world again, but definitely not my favorite by graphic novel 
for The Last Airbender. And another one that I read and I put it into biography but I don't really know how to put it. It's um, Yes, My Accent is Real by Kunal Nair. He's the actor um, of Rajesh Kutrapali in Big Bang Theory. I love Big Bang and um, I wanted a quick audiobook to go through when I was working on something and so I just popped it and had like read it in two days or something, listened to it in two days or something like that. And um, it was interesting to see his life and it's nice and refreshing to see a setting that is not America, like uh, he start his, his life story in India because he grew up in India and so you get to see um, his, uh, his family and his interaction in his world. It's, it's very nice. It's kind of like funny stories from him growing up in India up to how he got cast into Big Bang Theory. Um, of course, he's very funny and yeah, <laughs> so I think I said funny four times by now, but that, that's, that's all there was to it for me. Like it was not like, wow, so inspiring or anything, but it was, it was cute. It was nice. And I recommend if you, if you want to listen to something that is funny. <laughs> so this book, um, La Passe Miroir, The Visitor Mirror, it's the fourth book in the series. So I don't really know how to give you a synopsis, but to give you a synopsis of the first one, it's about Ophelie, a young girl uh, who lives on a bit of earth, which is called an arc, which is arch, which which is levitating above the center of the earth and there is 23 like that every tw each 23 has a different god with different powers and the descendant of this god have different powers Ophelia lives on i can't remember the name of her arch um, but her powers is to read objects through her hands and to be able to pass through mirrors and she is betrothed to a guy from the pole I arc island uh, which is, she knows nothing about and she has to go there and discover a uh, very different way of living and all the people on that arc have a power that messes up your mind, your head, that connects with your, with your brain and messes up your head. Anyway, so this is the last book in there and I'm gonna talk because I was going through a reread before reading that one and this is the third one which goes into a very different direction than the first one and two and I really enjoyed it way more than the first time I read it uh, I enjoyed getting to discover a new arch with new powers and seeing all the different in that arch all the people that came from everywhere in the world kind of live there together so they have all pretty much all the powers and it was very nice to to see it interact and it felt so much deeper than the first two one like how did the world became that way and uh getting starting to get answers and everything so i loved this one i gave it five stars and i was very eager to get to the fourth one but the fourth one i don't know he lo it's I don't want to give spoiler but it, it was doing a bit of the same thing as the third one so it's getting bored and it, it, it seems easy in part and like way way too complicated another part and we were getting um, the character were getting stuck on things that I didn't care I didn't want to read and yeah I was not disappointed but yeah, a bit, a bit disappointed because I hacked it up for myself. So, yeah, it didn't, it didn't go the way I wanted it to go. And yeah, so that's fine. And then I read A Romance, The Governance Game by Tessa Dare, which was really cute. I read it on your book and it's a funny, cute romance, fluffy. It's really not plausible. So <laughs> don't get attached to that. It's just... It's a cute romance set in England, in London, in the 18 something. And yeah, if you like that era, if you like just a quick 
listen or a quick read while you're doing something else. It's it's very nice. So next I've read Mr. Indraim and the Fleur du Coran by Eric Emmanuel Schmidt. I listened to that with my mom during Christmas time. It's a very cute story about Momo, a Jewish guy who became friend, friends with Mr. Ibrahim, um, um, Arabic, no, Islamic uh, guy. And it's the story of them getting friends and Momo having defiant parents and finding comfort in um, a Muslim person. So very cute, very nice. I recommend there is some passages that really speak really spoke to me um, yeah <laughs> can you believe this I found the 100 nights of hero by Isabel Greenberg at my local library in France it was just when I found this I was like what <laughs> it's in English <laughs> we have very 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 few books in English and usually None of them interest me <laughs> and I cannot believe that they had this one. I uh, wanted to read it for a long time. It's the retelling of the 1000 1, Arabic Nights. I, I hope it's the title in English. And uh, it's the retelling but with two girls in love with each other and this book has a lot of rep. Uh, a lot of queer characters and I love it. This book is very feministic and it speaks about the power of sisterhood and it makes a lot of fun of men and the way men think. Basically in this book all the men are dumb. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I enjoy the story but the artwork um, didn't really spoke to me. I know some people found it gorgeous uh, but it was not my favorite uh, but I really enjoyed there is such short stories in there that Hero tells her girlfriend and I really enjoy um, having those stories uh, mix in with the main story so yeah I recommend if you if you like graphic novels and if you like sisterhood and feminist stories and on to my favorite books we have To Love and Let Go from Rachel Brayton. Uh, she's a yoga teacher. She's the yoga teacher that trained me. Um, uh, and it's it's uh, about her life and about how everything she overcome in the past five years. Um, it was very inspiring. It's um, I, I put it in the biography section because it's mostly her telling her stories and how she overcome all of the struggles and grief because she lost her best friend from a car accident. She lost her dog a few months later and then she lost her grandma. And then a few months after that, her mom trying to commit suicide. So it's all of this and how she healed from that place and how she went, went through all that you go through her life story basically and it was very engaging very interesting and maybe a little bit biased because i love her as well but um yeah if you if you're going through something similar it will give you clues on how to to live after the grief and then i read milk and honey by rupee core it's a poetry uh bind up it's a mm, collection it's a poetry collection uh, divided in four categories oh we still have the bookmark divided in four categories the hurting the loving the breaking and the healing the hurting part which is the first part was who so intense uh, very sometimes gruesome but very true um, so when I read the first part I was like oh I don't know what to do with think about this it's a uh, very hard to read then I read the loving and uh, was very beautiful I connected with a lot of the the short po poems they are very short they are like this and she draws as well so she draws um, in it with the stories and then um, the two other parts are the breaking and the healing which for me um, sounded a bit the same they could have been put in one category but um, yeah again if you're human 
if you have emotions, you will connect with this. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it and I shared it with a lot of my friends because I think everyone can take away something from this read that. And then my favorite of the year, <laughs> read at the end of last year, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Wow, wow. This is why I read cla classics, because sometimes you find gem like that. It's the story of four girls, Mag, Joe, Beth, and Amy, growing up in America, I wanna say Philadelphia area, during the Civil War, and it's the stories of, of them growing up and becoming women and having struggles, overcoming them, and then mom, Marmy, which is the best person ever. We all need a mom like that. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to go see the movie. I don't know why I've been waiting for so long, <laughs> but I, I recommend this book to everyone. It really spoke to me. It's easy to read, even though it's a classic, sometimes they seem a bit daunting. It's quite thick of a book, but it's very easy to read and it's beautiful, a beautiful story. I some characters I didn't connect at first, but then when they grew up, I can see similar struggles that I had growing up as well, and even struggles I have today. And what impressed me so much is this I've been written like 200 years ago, and I can still connect deeply with it. And we have still the same struggle. And it talked about very modern subjects, like women not getting married and, uh, stuff like that. I, I, I love it. It's very close to my heart. Um, please, please read it. Give it a read. And that's it. That's all I have for you today. That's all the books I've read in December. And I hope you're having a good start of the year. And I'll see you soon in a new video. Bye.